want you to meet our friend Sarah Wynn. She is the founder of Wynn Coffee Supply. And she's opening eyes one cup of coffee at a time. Vietnamese American looking to showcase her country's coffee. An award-winning documentary filmmaker. The founder of Vietnamese coffee company Wynn Coffee Supply. And Sarah is here in the studio! Some of my earliest memories of coffee are my parents making a pot of coffee every day. Coffee is such an integral part of everyday life in Vietnam. When my parents came to the United States, I know that coffee reminded them of home too. I was born and raised in Boston. It's where I grew up my entire childhood. And when I think about my childhood in Boston, I, I, I have a, a mix of emotions and memories. My parents, when they came to US, they were 20 and they had me when they were in like their early 20s. I have these memories of like these Vietnamese house parties where it's like my parents and like all the kids around us hanging out. Then I have memories of me outside of the home, which brings up feelings of more confusion and conflict. My parents were different, they didn't speak English well. At a young age, it made me feel different and a little alienated. Looking back, I do remember feeling like I had so much inside of me that I wanted to express. I just didn't know how. In sophomore year of high school, I joined an organization called the Coalition for Asian Pacific American Youth. And so through this organization, I had exposure to ethnic studies, to Asian American history, to youth organizing, to community activism. I learned about civil rights in America, I learned about the Black Power Movement, I learned about the Vietnam War, the U.S.'s involvement in all of that. And so that, for me, was really the beginning of me fully understanding my parents' journey and what they had gone through. There was a huge shift of me finally gaining pride and appreciation for what my parents experienced, understanding that their journey to escape the country, to come to America, took so much courage. And it put me on this path to continue pursuing my own self-empowerment and also empowerment for my community and others around me. My mentor through this program, in high school, he had invited all the youth organizers from CAPE to go to a spoken word showcase that he was a part of. And at this showcase, there was another Asian American duo called Yellow Rage. What do you know about revolution? About Ho Chi Minh and Mao Zedong? Seeing them embody so much power and voice and story and confidence, um, it blew my mind. It made me think, I want to be that powerful. I was also involved in another organization in Boston called Artists for Humanity. This was the beginning of my exposure to graffiti culture. I was so drawn to the energy of one, anti-establishment, of two, breaking the rules, and three, producing something so large in life and beautiful for the feeling of being seen. I went to UCLA and I majored in Asian American Studies. The only thing that came to my mind at that time was, I want to be a revolutionary. As I was leaving UCLA, I moved to New York City to pursue a career in storytelling, in writing, in filmmaking. And during this time, I was super motivated by the idea of having my community stories be seen and understood. In 2016, I was freelancing in New York City and I spent a lot of time in coffee shops. And I started noticing that Vietnamese iced coffee was becoming really trendy. But like so many Asian-inspired beverages or food in America, when it first enters America, it's never done with cultural integrity. So I discovered this elitist framework in the coffee industry that I found to be deeply problematic. The largest coffee companies in the world who have global distribution are brands rooted in a Eurocentric or North American context. 
I really wanted to help bring visibility, representation, and care to the Vietnamese coffee industry, and more specifically, the Robusta growing community worldwide. American consumers have only been given the option of Arabica because the major coffee companies in the U.S., they only offer Arabica. The, the specialty coffee industry has built this narrative that Arabica is superior and Robusta is inferior. Vietnamese workers and farmers remained in poverty due to the low price tags attached to their coffee beans. Vietnam is the number one producer of Robusta coffee. In a lot of ways, Vietnam is synonymous with Robusta coffee. Robusta coffee makes up about 40% of the global coffee production. It's just not called out, it's not transparent. So in a lot of ways, Robusta has been rendered invisible. In 2016, I went to Vietnam and I conducted my first sourcing trip. And that was the very beginning of our direct trade relationship with our coffee farmer today. I remember bringing our Robusta coffee beans to certain retailers and they would flat out say to me, we only carry Arabica. And I would ask them why, and they honestly couldn't give me a really good reason other than because Arabica is better. At the end of the day, this perpetuates inequity within the coffee-growing community. I felt this was a really big injustice, and I felt really called to go out and change that. I really focused on deconstructing these frameworks of hierarchy or like this dichotomy, and I just talked about Robusta and Arabica side by side. Robusta beans have up to double the caffeine content of Arabica. Robusta beans also have up to 60% less fats and sugars than Arabica. I just really focused on leveraging my passion for storytelling and media to tell the story about Robusta. When people think about my trajectory from, I guess, a writer to a filmmaker to a coffee entrepreneur, it's, it's super non-linear, right? But there's a common thread through all of it. Coffee today is my medium to tell stories, to amplify communities who have been marginalized and read invisible, and to create worldwide systems of change.